Okay, we could bring that square to the top. Negative 1 over 1 minus negative 1 over negative 1. <laughs> yes, no? Yeah. Hopefully, if I did that right, make sure my signs are correct. I'm looking at that as negative 1 over 1 minus negative 1 over negative 1. That's negative 1 minus 1. Negative 2? You get an answer. You do. But now, think about the answer. Well, you can have a negative area, which means underneath the x-axis. That'd be okay. Think about the function then. Graph it on your graphing calculator if you can't think of the function. It's a domain. Why? Because it's negative. No, not because it's negative. Think about the function. What's the function do? I don't want to draw it in crayon for you. Think about what the function actually does. We have done so much in this class for you not to know this. Say what? Where does it have an asymptote? Okay, it does have those. That's okay though, because I'm between negative one and one. I'm between that. Draw the graph if you have to. Draw it. You should know the shape of that graph. You really should. Okay, you're going to make me do it. You're going to make me. Oh my gosh. Plug in zero. Plug in zero. Plug in zero. Can you plug in zero? No. Why not? So what's it tell you at x equals zero? What do you have? Look at your bounds. Where do they start? Okay, so are you adding up areas that actually are undefined at zero? Yeah. So since you're making rectangles, one of those rectangles is going to infinity. Do you see it? Yeah. It's probably infinite, infinitely many of them are going to infinity because it, when you go that close, you're going to infinitely many anyway. So can you add, actually add the area? Even though you can do the work, that doesn't exist. Uh, there's, a, there's a theorem in calculus. I don't think I get to it, uh, but basically it says that if you're not bounded somewhere, if you're not bounded, you can't add up those areas. So if it goes on forever in one direction, right, you can't, you can't do it. So you have to have that. Here we have an asymptote going to infinity. We're not bounded in any way, shape, or form. Therefore, that area cannot exist. Uh, or it does exist, but you can't find it using the methods that we use. There could be something else. Uh, I'm not sure if they, they have a way to do that, to be honest with you right now. Uh, but I, I, for what we know, that doesn't work. It's not negative 2. If you think about 1 over x squared, that's positive anyway, isn't it? Yeah. And if I did my signs wrong, it would come out to 0. I don't think I did my Did I do my signs wrong? No. Hope not. I did it real quick. But if you did, it would just come out to 0 anyway, which you know there's an area. It goes like this. It's, it's, it's a positive area. So that it's not, it makes nonsense. And it's because there's a domain issue. You, you had it right. It's not the negative. Mm -mm. It's the fact that we start here, we end there, and there's a problem between them. That would be the problem. Do you get it? There's a problem at zero. Zero is between negative one and one. You have to be at least bounded between there. Typically, you have to be continuous and bounded, and that would make it work. Yeah. Even if, the, even if our bounds were a little bit wider, it still would be undefined since that you can't measure, between, measure at x equals zero? What I mean by bounded isn't this way. I mean this way. You have to have this. Here's a curve between these two points, <coughs> it's got to have a low point and a high point, which means you can come up with something here and come up with something there that's between. Actually, really, it's just, if you're, if you're just talking about the x-axis is only above, it just has to be bounded above, it doesn't go anywhere. If it was below the x-axis, it'd be bounded below. So this one's really irrelevant when you're talking about the x-axis. That one doesn't matter. But if you find an area here, it's got to at least be bounded above. 
when you do something like this, hopefully you see the problem. Do you see the problem? How are you supposed to add that area? That goes to infinity. You can't do that. It doesn't. I don't know what the area is. I don't know if you can. If it's if you can say infinite area, I would assume so because it's going to infinity. <laughs> but you can't calculate it like this, like this. How many people understood that? Where the problem is? What's the problem again? Explain it to me again. What's the problem? Domain issue. Domain issue. Why? Why domain issue? Someone else. Domain issue. Why? Because it's undefined. Where? At zero. At zero. And why is zero important? Aha, uh -huh, aha, uh -huh. it's actually in our interval. If I had done this, would there be a problem? No. Not at all. No. But if I cross over that undefined point where we <coughs> have a, a domain issue and going to infinity, that's an issue for us. We can't do that. Now, is it kind of clear for you? All right. You guys had it. Come on, you should have known that. You should have read the bat. You should know that this picture looks like this, too. Like that. Just by thinking about asymptotes, you should know that. Asymptote going to infinity is like this. Asymptote in the middle goes like this. Sign analysis says they're both positive. Plugging into positive is positive. Plugging into negative is positive. It goes like that. You should know that. Anyway, this, none of that works. So we just put undefined for. Well, this one you would do. Uh, oh, yeah, the new one we would do, but the original problem would be tried undefined or. You would explain to me that there's a domain issue and that since our bounds are going from negative one and cross over somewhere we have a vertical asymptote, therefore in no way can find the, the area of that curve between those two points. Okay, now let me show you one more thing that we can do. Are you ready for it? Were there any more questions on that one? That's a good one, huh? Even though, because it, it looks like you can do it and you do it and you go, ah, I win, negative two. But you don't think about what the function actually is, it burns you. You don't want to do that. By the way, don't assume that all of them are going to be like that on the test. So if all of you go, oh yeah, it's got a domain issue, I can't do it, you're probably mistaken. I'm not going to give you 20 integrals that you can't do, okay? <laughs> you might get one of those 20 right. <laughs> yeah, maybe one. Maybe. Maybe one. I always find that funny. I tell you one thing and then you always assume it's that thing. Oops. Oh, you know what? I could show you one more thing on this uh, so that you would you would actually see it as well. If you, you should know, going back up here, you should know that because of our property that we had, that should be true, right? Yeah. Shouldn't yeah. it? <coughs> and now when you think of that, you go, oh, hey, there's a problem there. You see the problem there? Not zero. The ending bounds there. You couldn't even try to do the integral there. You couldn't even plug it in. You'd have undefined and undefined, and that would show it to you right there. Okay, so it's tricksome when I put it like this, but when you see it like that, you go, "Oh, yeah, that's more clear." That's more. Clear. Now, how about this one? Oh my gosh, a piecewise function. Can you do it with a piecewise function? Of course you can. It's actually not even that hard. What you have to do though is realize what this question is asking you. This question says, "I want the integral from zero to six of f of x, where f of x is defined as x cubed when x is bigger than or less than two." 5x minus 1 when x is bigger than or equal to 2. So, can you break up this integral in a very similar way I did up here so that you can make maybe two different integrals? Yeah. Well, let, let's do that. Where's our first integral going to start? Let's, let's do this. Zero, two, two, zero. zero. very good. And, and where's it go? Two. two. Yeah, because that's our separating point over there, two. Uh, what function is defined between zero and two, the top one or the bottom one? Good, the x cubed, very good. Plus, because we know, using the property I actually defined up here again for you, we can separate an integral into two different integrals by matching up the bounds. 0, 2, and then 2, 2, mm -hmm. Of which other 
This will be my other question. Well, does it matter that this one's actually less than two and this one's greater than or equal to two? No, not really. We're, we're ha we have such small rectangles, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they're, they're, they're all going to mash together anyway, so uh, no, not really. If you have say that it wasn't greater than or equal to two, then if it was, it was just greater than, it wouldn't matter, correct? Because you would have a gap right there. No, it's still do it. Uh, although, wait, wait, did you say that it's this one changed? No, the one below it. Oh, that equal didn't point. have it? When then it you'd have an undefined point. point. Yeah, you... I'll say it this way, the area of one point doesn't even exist anyway. So you could technically do it with two different integrals because the area of that one point doesn't matter. Uh, it's, it's one point. Area, the width of one point is, you can't do it. There is no width between one point. It's, it's a, a point is that which has no breadth, which means it does not have a width. No matter what the type is, the area would be zero of that single point. However, this wouldn't make sense from zero to six. This one couldn't be given to you like that because this says continuously from zero to six. And so that really wouldn't make sense. Does that make sense? <laughs> you got, you, I couldn't do that to you because you wouldn't have the ability to break it up because to break it up, it does have to be continuous. Um, that in, in another, that, I think I, I gave that to you. I don't know if I stated it uh, word for word the way the book does, but in order for that property to work, the ability to split up that, that integral, it's gotta be continuous. Uh, that's another reason why this one would fail. That's not continuous. Do you get that? So you couldn't even split up to begin with. It's got to be there. It's got to all be there. You, you got to have the ability to break it up. And that's the only way this works. Otherwise, you are missing points, like you pointed out. That's a good point. Uh, great question. I talked through that pretty quickly. Are there any questions about what I just said? Were you able to follow it? Yes. So, same thing if it was if the bottom function was 5x minus 2 or something, and there's a jump, then you wouldn't be able to do it either. If they didn't actually match, um, oh, that's a good question. You mean if there's a, an actual gap, like if we plug in two and it doesn't? Right, like they're not the same for both functions. Yeah, they're they're not in this case. Oh, you're right. They're not. Yeah, they're not in that case. No, it doesn't matter. Just it means that you're you're defined for every point from in this case from zero to six that you have something for every one of those points. That's the ability to break that up. Now, in, in practicality, does it, if you add those areas, or you add, what was it here? If you add those areas, it's going to be the same. You just can't do this if you don't have that. That's the, the point. Does that matter? You just can't do it. Legally, legally speaking, you can't do it. Theoretically, it would make no difference, though. <laughs> Theoretically, it does make a difference. That, that you cannot well, actually do yeah. it. Practically, this area plus this area will equal this area. Yes. Oh, sorry. Right now. This area plus this area, this area plus this area, I should do it this way. This area plus this area, even like that, will equal that area because the area under a point <coughs> is zero. But you can't do this unless you have this. That's the point. <laughs> Dang. Good questions. You make me work for my money today. That's why they pay me the big bucks. You know that, right? <laughs> Explain all this junk to you. Uh, you I don't get paid big bucks. <laughs> The Audi I drive is 01, so.